Okay, well, good morning. There might be a few others come, but that might be why we sing 509 to start with. We'll tell them to come. We thank the people come. 509. <laughs> Searching and true diagnosis. Gratitude can be a vaccine that can prevent the invasion of a disgruntled attitude. As antitoxins prevent the disastrous effects of certain poisons and diseases, Thanksgiving destroys the poison of fault finding and grumbling. When trouble has smitten us, a spirit of Thanksgiving is a soothing antiseptic. Some of these stories and things you've heard before and whatnot, but uh, the idea of attitude made me think of the one where the uh, traveling preacher was taking his apprentice along to show him the ropes of the business. He's getting up there in his age and needs someone to carry on, so traveling from community to community, he would go and preach the gospel and just be of service to the people. And this young guy thought, wow, it's really pretty cool, but the young guy just didn't get it. I mean, this older gentleman was thankful 
for everything. I mean, he didn't have a lot of money, things weren't always going well, but he was always thankful. When it came to the end of the day, when they came to a place, he would kneel by his bed, the old man would, and, and give thanks to God. Well, it's a good virtue, but the young guy just thought, man, where's the guy getting an attitude like that? So they were out one day, and the old vehicle that they were driving died on its way to a country church. A country church that was 10 miles further down this old country road. And so it died, and the young guy thought, hey, could be thankful for that. Well, in their truck to the church, it started raining. And then it started sleeting. Then there was a hint of snow in the air. And they weren't prepared for this. It was really kind of fall, and so they didn't have the coverage they needed. So they were getting wetter and colder, and it was getting worse outside. And of all things, it was getting darker, because they were going slower. So they're moving along, and then here come a herd of cattle running across the road, and they bump into him, knock the old man down, he falls into the mud, just covered. So they continue on, after they get up and brush themselves off, they go a little further, and finally there's, there's the light. They said that the old parsonage would have a light on them. And they go, oh, great. And so they thought about the warmth that would be in there, and they got in there, and just at that time, a branch fell off, hit the power line, and knocked out all the electricity. And they thought, oh, Oh, well, well this, this will be okay. At least we're inside, where it's warm but getting cold. Yeah. Oh, well, quick, quick, let's take a shower. Because, you know, the water heater is probably still going. But it was a gas water heater, and nobody paid the bill, and so there was no hot water. And so they slowly took off their drenched clothing and they tried to dry off the best possible. And the young guy, though, he is tickled to death. Because he's thinking, this would be good. I can't wait to see what he's going to say when he kneels down beside the bed. And so it happened. And out of the corner of his eye, he got a good spot. He was going to see how the old man would handle it. The old man got down on his knees, put his hand on the bed. He said, dear God, Thank you that every day is not like this one. <laughs> Sometimes that's a very thankful moment for me, and I don't know how it is for you, but it wasn't any worse than what it was. After you've had a pretty dismal day, things have gone bad, thank God it wasn't any worse. But we thank Him with our attitude. That's what we think. And, uh, and that carries into a, another old story about an old man. He, you know, he's sitting at the bench at a train station. This old guy, he goes there every day. He just, you know, got nothing else to do and watch people come in, see who's coming in, see who's going, that sort of thing. Train pulls up. Young man gets out. Hey there, old timer. What kind of town is this? I uh, think about setting up a business. And I'm a uh, I'm moving away from uh, my, old, my old dwelling. And I said, well, what, what, what kind of town did you come from? Ugh. <laughs> people backbiting over there, business dealings underhanded. People just treat others just horrible over there. You know, families don't get along, and they're just backbiting all the time. The old guy said, well, I think that's probably what you're going to find here. You know, Young guy gets back on the train, gets on, and takes off. Later in the afternoon, another train comes in. The young guy steps out. Hey, hey, sir, sir, uh, excuse me. I I'm thinking about moving, and I'm looking for a town. This, this looks pretty nice. As I drove through, I saw a lot of clean houses and things like that. Uh, what, what do you think of this town? The old man said, well, where did you come from? Oh, it's a great place. I mean, loving families and people just get along all the way, but I just figure I need to branch out on my own and see what I can do, and, and this looks like a good spot for me to spread my wings. The old man said, well, I think what you found there is what you're going to find here. <coughs> and I've seen that 
you know, from the, the side of being in a congregation, from the side of being a pastor, and just being in life. It's the same place. And some people say, ah, 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 ah. and others go, well, this is home. So, it is incumbent upon us to be as loving and kind as we can be. But maybe we just pray for other attitudes to change. It could be ours. But we should have the attitude of gratitude. Uh, if you haven't moved too far in your hymnals, 509 would be a good one. We did that. 508. I guess I'm still trying to bring in more people. 508. <laughs>
Yeah, so glad to see Amy in church last Sunday. She stepped right up and uh, hit a home run. Thank you. That's a good deal. Uh, yes, I did not properly introduce Amy's uh, granddaughter of Don and Mary, daughter of Doug and Tina. All right, I'm down the line. Very good. So we're going to go into a, a time of one of the times of open sharing. So uh, please be obedient. And uh, Andrea said uh, whatever song request you might have, we could get through that too. So be open. And uh, let's bless each other with our obedience to the Spirit. So let's join together for a while. Thank you. 
we're looking for. Yeah, we be in banks. just like to say praises for what a year that we've had as a family. We've had three daughters, two daughters graduate, and, and Laura got married to our new wonderful son-in-law, Ryan, and you know, Dad had a stroke, and this church was praying for him, and he's doing so much better, and I just, I thank the Lord for every day, and the, the wonderful life that he's given me, and I know it started at HCMP.
Thinking of the uh, idea of attitude and uh, gratitude, perhaps for you as well, you've got your own little things that this applies to, but there are times that I'm just not thankful for my cell phone, that I have times when I don't want to be contacted, you know, I want to just be left alone, but then there are times that I'm so thankful for it. I think what a wonderful device that I, I can be in touch and I can be in touch with good news or bad news just at a moment. So think of that. I, I think of my LP bill. I'm so unthankful for that <laughs> until January and it's 20 below and the wind's blowing outside and my house is warm. I'm so thankful. So that might be something to think about as, as you go along. Uh, we're going to look at and sing together 382.
I was just thinking about my great grandchildren or the sixth generation that has worshipped here at this church. Five hundred thirteen. Five one three.
this yeah. this young man needs a partner. Okay, yeah, yeah, you too. So you are going to take turns one at a time. First person is just kind of looking ahead. The other person, I want you to look at their nose and focus on it. And then look at their left cheek. Or yeah. I love you. <laughs> and the other person is watching your eye. Okay? So you're staring straight ahead. She's staring straight ahead and watching my eyes. I'm going to take a little bit of time and look at her nose. And then I'm going to look at her cheek. Okay? So do that. All right? Now, do it. There are like six muscles in your eye that give you the ability to go from this point to that point. You make the slightest adjustment with your eye. So now, do it again, and maybe keeping that in mind. And if you're really good, you can look at the pupil and watch it change. Just from that distance, from this distance to that distance, the pupil will change because the focus is different. All right, so try it again. Three man mark. So the other person now has something to look at. Thank you. Okay, now switch. So the other person now too. So if you were the eye mover, now you're just looking at their eye and watching the people and the movement. Yeah, so you're going to see Um, All right, you husbands and wives, you can you know, look at this later. Okay. Here. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. If you think of the intricacies of just that movement, and for some of you to see, it was easier for me with Jean because my nose is longer, that makes it further to my cheek. So the pupil changed. I mean, I can see the pupil change, the focus change. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. So that might be another thing for you to grab a hold of this week, is just be thankful for all the good gifts you have. The great gifts that we got, uh, Chip and Alicia are going to share with us. Okay. 
forget that you've always been the king of the world. Just a whisper of your voice can tame the seas. So who am I to try to take the lead? Still I run ahead and think I'm strong enough. But you're the one who made Try to take life back right out of my hands of the king of the world. How could I make you so small when you're the one who holds it all? When did I forget that you've always been the king of the world? Oh, you set it all in motion every single moment. You've always been the king of the world. I try to take life back right out of the hands of the king of the world. How could I make you so small when you're the one who holds it all? When did I forget that you've always been the king of the world? You will always be the king of the world. Yeah. 